Hi everybody, it's John Adams. I wanted to talk with you today about a really important topic and we're going to be taking a preview look at the 2018 um, Real Estate LLC in Georgia. Now here's last year's book and I know a lot of you probably bought last year's book which was $197 and a bargain at that price. Um, because the average attorney now is charging $300 an hour and uh, we get into a lot more topics than you can cover in an hour in that book. But um, there have been changes for 2018 uh, and I think one of the real problems people have that use LLCs, there, there are two groups of people. There are people that have LLCs that are flawed and we're going to talk about that. And we also have people that have LLCs that were created improperly. And then there's everybody else who doesn't have an LLC. And it's such a powerful tool that I want to cover uh, some of the benefits. We're not going to get into everything. We've got 30 minutes here. But I've already been at it for a minute and 18 seconds and we haven't even started. So let's dive in. And I'm going to save some time at the end for questions. And by the way, I, what a tremendous crowd we have today. I'm so proud that you guys turned out just before Christmas for this. So uh, let's forge ahead. You ready? Hey, look at this. I've got a, I have a red pointer. Pretty good. We're getting really snazzy here. That's all I can tell you. All right. I have to go somewhere to make it do. Hmm. Having a hard time. Ah, there we go. Next. All right, so the question is, how do you hold title at this point? Well, if you own real estate in your name, you are asking for a liability lawsuit. You can ask me. I've been sued. Now, I won in court, but it took five years, and it cost me $10,000 to win. And in retrospect... Um, the insurance company had recommended that we pay 5000 bucks and be done with it. And it was a completely fraudulent lawsuit. And the guy got nothing, but I refused. And they said, well, we may go ahead and pay him anyway. Well, the guy's in prison now. He was a drug dealer. So anyway, I'll tell you about it another time. But my point here is there are people out there who are looking for a reason to sue you. And uh, you've seen the ads. Have you been injured in an accident? Get the money you deserve. One call, that's all. And what are we talking about here? It costs your tenant nothing to do this. And they're sitting around TV, watching TV in the middle of the night, and here comes Ken Nugent. Um, well, we're going to get to him. Do you already have a corporation or an LLC? I know a lot of you people do. Well, my question to you is, was it organized properly? And I think you'll find in many cases, the answer is no. Next, did you hold the organizational meeting? I'm always stunned. You cannot have an LLC in Georgia without an organizational meeting. If you can't prove that there was an organizational meeting, you are leaving the door open to um, a, a lawsuit by, brought by a plaintiff who's going to win because they're going to say your LLC is a sham if you never had the organizational meeting. So I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but if you don't have documentation of your organizational meeting, you don't have an LLC. Did you actually sell the property to the entity? Was there a deed or did you just sort of make this up and say, okay, now it's done because I've got some paperwork here. There has to be a deed. It has to be filed at the courthouse. And I'm always amazed when I ask people, well, nobody told me I had to do that. Well, yes, you have to do that. And not only did you have to do it, but you have to be able to prove it. And then in addition to that, you have to have contemporaneous minutes for all of your meetings, which means that the minutes have to be recorded in some form somewhere in a consistent manner in a time frame that is reasonable, reasonably within the uh, uh, time that they actually occurred. 
So you can't go back and say, yeah, I had a meeting uh, back in 2015, and uh, here's what we talked about. That's not contemporaneous, and a court may very well throw that out. So what do we do from here? Well, for the first question is, who is John Adams, and why should you listen to me? How do you like my high school graduation picture there? Um, well, here's why. Uh, one, I've been a successful property manager right here in Georgia for over 40 years. And I have seen just about every kind of rotten, stinking tenant. I've had some fabulous tenants, but I've also had some really stinkers. So um, that gives me a, a little edge up there. Next, I've been a successful investor and an entrepreneur over that time period. I like to tell people I've never been bankrupt and I've never been arrested and I've never cheated on my wife. That's all you need to know about me. 42 years. How about that? Um, I'm a licensed Georgia real estate broker, which means I have to understand the process, um, not just have been through it, okay? You don't get a broker's license in, in this state uh, if you don't understand what the law says. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but I am a broker, and I can share with you my experiences. I've never had a complaint with the Georgia Real Estate Commission. We have tried real hard to keep our nose clean and follow the law all along, and we've just never had a complaint. And uh, knock on wood, I hope we don't. Never been arrested, never bankrupt. I'm a best-selling author on Georgia real estate. Now, I realize there aren't too many authors on Georgia real estate, but I is one. And I'm an Eagle Scout, so uh, that, that tells you a little about me. Uh, but I'm not an attorney, and I'm not an accountant, and I can't and I won't give you legal advice or accounting advice. Instead, what I can do is share with you what has worked for us over the last four decades. Okay? So... Today we're going to be talking about what I call my hybrid real estate LLC. This is not the same LLC that you would get off the shelf if you just went down to the Secretary of State's office and whipped up an LLC. It combines components of a sole proprietorship with all the protections of a C corporation. And it's designed to hold title to real estate and that's all. It doesn't do anything else. There's no great tax benefits. Um, it's inexpensive, and it gets your name off the public record. Okay? So I, I want to make that real clear. Um, so let's talk about the LLC in operation. It gives you complete privacy, which I really like. I am able to legally say, no, I do not own that property. The single-member LLC has already been design designated by the Internal Revenue Service as a disregarded entity, which means you don't have to file an additional partnership tax return or a corporate tax return, which you would if it was not a disregarded entity. That is huge. It's huge because uh, I don't want to file any more tax returns. Your name never appears on the public record. Nobody can ever prove that you had anything to do with this property other than, well, he was the property manager, but that's one of the things that he does. Um, and you get corporate level liability protection, and it's best for your buy and hold properties. Okay, got it? This is not for flippers. So let me give you an example. Um, up to 10 properties, I recommend that you have one LLC for each property. We'll, we can talk about that more later, but for right now, let's just do that. And I like to use the street address because uh, the name is usually available. So let's say I've got a rental house at 225 Peachtree Street. I'm going to call that 225 Peachtree Street LLC. And I've got another one at 315 Sycamore Street. So I'm going to call that one 315 Sycamore LLC. And that's just to keep up with them and, and identify them. It doesn't link me to it in any way. Um, so this one, 225 Peachtree, would own property number one, which is located at, guess what, 225 Peachtree Street. Same thing for 315 Sycamore. And then we'll have another LLC, which will be your management company LLC, and I'm just going to call it London Services, which I just made up. You can call it anything you want to call it. 
Uh, in fact, the more generic, the better. Mine is called Real Estate Services. And uh, your name never appears on that either, by the way. And that LLC signs a management agreement with both so that if the management gets in trouble, um, it's an LLC. If the property has li or suffers liability, it's an LLC. And in both cases on all of these properties, the tenants would write their checks to London Services LLC, which prevents you from having to have a checking account for each one of the properties. And your management agreement with, with your properties through London Services says that the management company will collect all of the rent every month and disperse it uh, under, the, under the direction and guidance of the owner, which of course is 225 Peachtree LLC, which is you. And you have a meeting of, of 225 Peachtree LLC, and at that meeting you agree to enter into a contract with London Services, and you agree that uh, they will have the, the authority and power to pay the mortgage, collect the rent, and disperse the remainder in accordance with your instructions. Okay? Just that simple. All right? So, um, that allows you to be able to say, I'm just a property manager. I don't accept cash. I have, I have these cards printed that say, I'm the property manager. Here's what they look like. I don't know if you've ever seen them before, but uh, come up and I'll give you one. Um, and it's, I'm just the property manager. I don't work here. I mean, I, I work here. I don't own the property. And, uh, the, you know, they're going to say, well, who is the owner? So, you know, it's some attorney somewhere. I don't know that much about it. But they have hired my company to be the manager, and I make all the decisions here. Um, and you sign everything as Joe Smith, manager for London Services, LLC. Um uh, and London gets its own employer identification number. That's fine. You just tell the IRS that it's uh, associated with your Social Security number. And again, if it's a single member LLC, which it should be, um, it's a disregarded entity. Again, no additional tax return. It flows directly through to you. Now, your accountant may tell you that you have to have a separate tax return. And they're wrong. I'm just telling you, if you do like I tell you, I'm married to a CPA. And in, in my book, she explains, she, I made her write a whole chapter in the book on why you don't have to file a separate tax return. And we've had people call up and say, well, my accountant says you do. And I say, tell your accountant to read chapter six or whatever it is. And they call back later. Wow, he changed his mind. So, Okay, um, you get your own employer identification number, London gets the rent, pays all the bills, and London will need an escrow trust account and an operating account. Now, there are plenty of banks in Metro Atlanta and all over Georgia that will give you free business checking. So you go in, again, uh, London is now going to have to have a corporate resolution to do banking with uh, First Bank and Trust in Statesboro, or whoever it is you're using, and that needs to be in the minutes, and you'll have to have that signed by the um, um, manager of London Services LLC, which happens to be you, and you take, get that notarized, and you take it in to the bank, and you will be allowed to open a free checking account, an operating account, and an escrow trust account. So you can keep money separate. The escrow account is for money that does not belong to you, security deposits, okay? And the operating account, the rent comes in, it goes into the escrow account, and then later, if you have bills to pay, it's transferred to the operating account, and it is dispersed. That way, um, any money that does not belong to you is in the escrow trust account, so you can keep up with it. And any money that does belong to you is either in the operating account on its way to being dispersed, or what's left over belongs to you at the end of the month. And there will, I'll share with you how to get that later. Okay, so let's move ahead. Here's our good friend, Ken Nugent. 
One call, that's all. This was a premises, no, this was, I'm sorry, this was an auto accident. But um, the thing we're concerned about is premises liability. But I want you to know how simple it is to, to top a million dollars. You're saying to yourself right now, I don't need this LLC thing because I got a million dollar liability insurance policy. Well, you're right. You do have a one million, maybe it's only 500,000, I don't know. But I'm not aware of any company that will go higher than a million. And today, a simple slip and fall can be a million dollars. And I'm not kidding. Once you get the medical profession involved, the cost of these things goes berserk. And Ken Nugent knows that and has done very well profiting by it. So uh, let's forge ahead and talk a little bit about premises liability. And you can see here is a guy, a, a, um, uh, somebody, he's either a workman or he is a tenant, and there was a loose board, and he's tripped on it there on the deck, and he's falling down, and he's going to um, end up with uh, a gash in his head, and he's going to have to have a new head. I don't know what all, but anyway, this all falls under the field of premises liability, and uh, I want to talk with you about it for just a second. Now, premises liability is a field of tort law codified in statute which concerns the duty of care. This is a very important phrase currently in the legal community. Uh, most attorneys had never heard of premises liability a few years ago. They were much more concerned with suing over things like lead-based paint and um, uh, mercury and mold and mildew. The big money today, premises liability. And all they've got to do is prove that you did not exercise the duty of care. And it's actually pretty easy to do. Um, but it's owed by those who control real property, either through ownership or management, to the people who lease. It deals with liability that may arise from accidents caused by the defective or dangerous condition of the premises. And so we have to do everything possible to make it hard for someone who has, and by the way, I want my tenants to be happy and healthy so they can pay the rent and stay there forever. Now, personal injury attorneys, uh, somebody has a slip and fall on your property and they're up watching late night TV and they're watching Ken Nugent. What does he say? Get the money you deserve. One call, that's all. Well, guess what? He doesn't deserve any money. He's already had his medical bills paid. His ambulance bill was paid. He was reimbursed for the time he missed from work. You have insurance to cover those reasonable costs. But now he wants a million dollars, and you, you're just stunned. He goes to see Ken Nugent, and here's what Ken says. Who owns this property? Uh, the tenant says, I don't know. Ken spins around in his chair goes and looks at the county records. It's owned by uh, 315 Sycamore Street, LLC. He says, dang, gone. So he checks to see how much equity is there. And he finds out that the property is worth 250000 and there's a $300,000 mortgage on it. Dang, gone, that's not good. Not only is there no equity in that property, but there's negative equity. So if they sued and took possession of the property, they'd be 50,000 bucks in the hole. Ah, what else does 315 Sycamore LLC own? Well, the answer is, if you only have 10 LLCs and 10 properties, 315 Sycamore LLC doesn't own anything else. There's nothing in any county in Georgia. And Ken Nugent um, then if there is anything else, they check to see how much equity is there. But if there's nothing else, that's the best. And finally, he's got to decide, is this wor is it worth taking this case? Because there's a lot of work that these guys put into it, and they don't want to take the case if they don't think they're going to win. And that's when uh, Ken Nugent turns around to your tenant and says, I think you've got a good case. We'd like to represent you, 
and see if we can collect a million dollars for you. However, in this particular case, we will need a retainer of $10,000 to get started. And your tenant looks at him like he has just landed from Mars and says, I don't have $10,000. I mean, how many of your tenants have $10,000? And at that point, Ken Nugent says, one door, that's all, get out. And that's the end. And because nobody's going to take the case because there's no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. The R-E-L-L-C, or the Real Estate LLC, that's that hybrid one we're talking about, gives you full liability protection. It, it has a no-tax impact design. It is a disregarded entity. It may trigger the due-on-sale clause. Now, I teach you in the book how to avoid that, and we don't have time to get into it today. But if you don't do it right, it can trigger the due-on-sale clause, and there are plenty of ways to solve that problem when we go into them in the book. You can transfer in and out of it at any time. Uh, there's no additional fees. Uh, you just simply um, go down and file. Well, you would have to pay for a uh, warranty deed. But I think the piece of paper is like a dollar, and you can record it for, I think, $10 per page or 15 bucks a page, something like that. And, I mean, we're not talking about many pages here. So you can go in and out and in and out. Why? Because the IRS says this is not an event of sale. It's a disregarded entity. Okay, they see right through it. Now, the courts don't. That's entirely different. The state of Georgia has a lot of respect for the LLC, but the IRS does not. And that's a good thing. And we we're going to add the LLC as an additional insured on your insurance policy so that they're not upset that you have placed ownership into a corporate entity. Uh, cost you 100 bucks to create it. It's $50 for an annual registration you can do over the internet. There are two online forms that you fill out and you are done. I do recommend that you consult with your attorney and your CPA. Now you're saying, wait a minute, John, why would I buy the book and then talk to my attorney? Because if you don't, your attorney is going to have to educate you about what you're doing and why. And they're going to charge you $300 an hour for about three to four hours of education. And then you're going to say, oh, okay, good. Well, let's go ahead and do it. Then they're going to want another $1,500. So now you're at $9,000, $2,400. Whereas if you educate yourself up front, <coughs> excuse me, for a reasonable fee, and then go see your attorney, you get the benefit of your attorney's legal advice, which I cannot and won't give you, plus the knowledge that you gained uh, in this in this program, in this course. That always brings up the question of whether or not you should put your personal residence in an LLC. I don't have time to address that today. It's always a hot, hotly debated issue. Um, I, I, I don't know what to say. Um, it depends on what county you're in, and we go into it in detail in the book. So, how do you do bank accounts? You need a corporate resolution for banking. Do you need one account for each property? Absolutely not. The management company can have one account for all of the properties. So each LLC hires the management company to handle all the collections and pay your monthly payments, pay your taxes, pay your insurance, and then make an annual accounting back to the LLC and pay out any excess. Okay, it's just that simple. And uh, remember that you will have to have an escrow account for your security deposits. And I go ahead and run my rent through there anyway, just to be on the safe side. But it doesn't cost anything to have an escrow account anymore. You just go into the bank and say, I need a new business um, uh, checking account. <coughs> and they say, sure, we can do that. And you make your deposits of any money that does not belong to you personally. It should always be in the escrow account. And that's whether you're licensed or not. And that's just my personal opinion. Uh, what are the dis There are some disadvantages of using an LLC to hold title to your property. 
you lose the exemption from the landlord-tenant move-in, move-out inspection provisions. Okay? If you're a single person, if you are a private citizen, not a licensee, and you don't have 10 or more properties, you don't have to do move-in, move-out inspections. Now, you're going to get sued if you don't because everybody thinks you have to, but I'm just telling you, you're technically exempt, and some people want to stay that way. I think this is fool's gold. I think you're playing with fire, and I think it's smarter to go ahead and do your move-in, move-out inspections uh, so you've got that to fall back on. The loss of the exemption from escrow account for security deposits. Likewise, if you are a private individual, not a licensee, and have 10 or fewer properties in your own name or your family's name, you are technically potentially exempt from having to use an escrow account. Again, I think that is a big mistake, and I don't recommend that you use that um, exemption because it looks bad. And if you do get sued, the judge is very likely to cast a, a dim eye towards you when you say, well, I'm exempt from, from these provisions. Then why were they putting the law in the first place? Uh, just go ahead. These are best business practices. You really ought to be doing them anyway. Uh, you do lose the exemption from the rigid time frame requirements in the landlord-tenant law. Again, you ought to be following the rigid time frames anyway, because if you don't, again, it looks bad if you end up in court. Trust me, I've been there. And I'm here I'm trying to explain to the judge, well, Your Honor, there's a special exemption for people like me that have 10 or fewer properties in their own name. Well, once I passed 10, that was no longer an issue, but that dog won't hunt half the time. And then the law, you lose your ability to represent yourself in dispossessory actions if you go into uh, state court. Now, in magistrate's court, anybody can go. But in state court, you have to have an attorney represent you. So that's, those are the only disadvantages I can see. Now, the Real Estate LLC, the Basic Asset Protection Plan, has you creating a single-member LLC, just like I tell you to do it. You let an attorney be the organizer and the agent. You don't even have to tell them. I mean, you should up front, but uh, once you've got an agreement with an attorney, they're going to be your agent. Go ahead and set them up as the organizer, uh, label them as the agent, and you send that into the state. At the same time, you're going to be eliminating visible equity. Now, this is called further encumbering your property or adding additional mortgages onto it, and there's a variety of ways to do that. I'm not going to go into it now because I've got a minute and 12 seconds left, um, which I'm going to be over a lot, but that's beside the point. But the last couple of things here are get good insurance. You know, we're talking about asset protection here. The number one step in an asset protection plan is to get and keep good quality insurance. It's always your first defense. The LLC is way back there and it's sort of a last resort if somebody's coming after you for millions of dollars. And then finally use best management practices. You can avoid an awful lot of lawsuits if you just keep people happy and that's one thing I have tried to do. You get happier tenants. They stay longer. They pay more rent. They tell their friends they're happy. Um, it's just all kind of benefits. So something to think about. But um, that's what I teach in Landlord Survival Guide. So here's your call to action. I want you to understand your level of risk. And you do have a pretty high level of risk if your name is on title to real estate. And it's getting worse every day. This whole idea of premises liability is taking off. And as long as Ken Nugent can get rich and drive uh, Porsches around, and I, he, apparently he does, uh, Maseratis and these other things, um, 
the attorneys are going to be very attracted to premises liability. I want you to separate your inventory from your investments. If you buy a piece of property to hold for the purpose of investing for more than a year <coughs> and you place it in rental service, it is an investment. It is no longer inventory. However, if you're buying real estate, fixing it up and selling it or flipping it or wholesaling it, then it's considered inventory. And there are huge tax differences. And once you've, if you don't separate the two, and the LLC is the perfect way to do that, if you don't separate the two, the IRS can come in and say, wait a minute, you're a dealer, this is all inventory. And you really get hatcheted at the tax level, okay? I'm going to move this out of the way. Um, next. I want you to understand the benefits that we talked about of a single member LLC or the real estate LLC. It um, gives you complete privacy. Your name never gets on the public record. You get top grade corporate level liability protection and it doesn't cost you hardly anything. And it's rock solid. And that's, that's one reason I recommend it, okay? I want you to consider a flipper S-Corporation. If you do flippers, you need to do them inside your S-Corporation because that's taxed at a different rate than your investments are. Um, and that could actually be an LLC as well. Um, but you should do all of your flipping, all of your short-term stuff should be in one entity uh, so you can segregate it and not run the risk of dealer treatment. And I also want you to put on your list of things to do, calling your attorney. And after you have educated yourself, then go get your attorney's advice. I just, I, you know, I pay a lot of money to attorneys. I paid $10,000 on that case where I got sued. But it was worth it um, because I felt like I had quality representation from somebody who knew the law a lot better than I do. And talk to your tax people. Now, be prepared to run into some resistance because I can't tell you how many CPAs have called me and said, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm a CPA. Well, I've been married to one for 42 years, and I think she's probably the most knowledgeable um, CPA in Georgia on uh, real property taxation. Uh, that's my personal opinion. I'm sticking with it. And get your name off title. That's what the whole purpose of this thing was today, is to try to convince you to get your name off the title. And even if you've already done that, if you have not done the things you need to do to um, keep that LLC alive and happy, if you haven't had the organizational meeting, if you haven't uh, had uh, your annual meetings and had contemporaneous minutes, then you've got a flawed corporation. And in the case of a flawed LLC, it's better to start over than to try to fix it. Okay? So, uh, finally, you can get a good night's sleep because you know you've got a level of protection most people do not have. So, what are we talking about here? Well, I wrote this book, The Real Estate LLC in Georgia, uh, what you see right here, again, is the 2017 edition, Ta -da! and there have been changes for 2018. Uh, we've made a number of editions. We have reflected a number of court decisions that uh, have occurred in the last year, um, but more importantly, we've added some new areas, and um, I, I just, if you bought one in the past, more power to you. It's time to upgrade. It's sort of like, you know, going from Windows 7 to Windows 10. It's There's new things that you need, okay? How to structure your business for privacy, for asset protection, for complete control, and for a few tax benefits. Um, the Real Estate LLC in Georgia book is not just a book. It is a 12-month membership where you get a complete discussion on LLCs, a full understanding of what it is and why you need it. You get all of the organizational forms, 
all of the required meeting forms in Georgia. You get filled in examples so you know exactly how to fill it out with a BIC pen. You get step-by-step -step instructions and you learn how to stay out of trouble with the courts. And that's a big deal. Uh, there's a full three-hour training video that you can watch as many times as you like for up to a year. We add to that regularly. And it is unconditionally guaranteed to be right for you. For 30 days, you can examine the book, examine the program, watch your three-hour training. And if for any reason it's not right for you, I'll buy it back, no questions asked. Now, you can use an attorney. I, I have tremendous respect for the legal profession. They do a great job. I just think they're a little pricey. Now, this slide was prepared a couple of years ago when attorneys were only charging 250 bucks an hour that knew about real estate. They're up to 300 now. I don't blame them. They probably deserve it. Uh, but figure you got $750 for three hours of work, uh, filing fees 100 bucks, corporate records 150, corporate seal 75, initial meeting fee or organizational meeting fee. It's going to be 125, maybe more. Uh, if it takes an hour, it'll be 300 bucks. And then your annual review and registration. Every year, the attorney's going to want to look over the books and look over what you did and make sure you're in compliance and so forth. You've spent $1,500 there. Uh, that's a lot of money. Add that to three hours of explaining to you what it's all about, and now you're up in the $2,400, dollars $2, price range, which, uh, you know, if it avoids a $100,000 lawsuit, uh, that's probably a worthwhile investment. But I've got an alternative. Why don't you buy this book and buy this 12-month educational program uh, to really understand the process of what the real estate LLC is in Georgia and how it uh, can work for you, how you get privacy, privacy, asset protection, complete control of the asset, and some tax benefits on the side. Each package includes a full year of updates. So if I come out, we come out with a new form or the state of Georgia introduces some new forms that they want us to use, you'll get that for free for 12 months. You get document updates for 12 months. So you're going to get one, uh, you're going to get access to the 2017 immediately. And then when the 2018 comes out, you'll get access to that as well. Everything is online, so you can pull it down and look at it anytime you want to. We have quarterly mastermind live webinars, just like the one you're listening to or watching right now. You get unlimited access to the vault. So anytime anybody does a webinar related to this topic, uh, usually it's free for people to look at for three days. After that, it goes into the vault, and it's members only. And if you become a member for 12 months, you have unlimited keys to the vault. You get weekly online updates where we tell you what's going on. Um, so you don't have to keep up with everything. And of course, your, your uh, course fee, the cost of the program, is tax deductible. It's educational. And it keeps your saw sharp. Have you ever tried to cut a piece of wood with a dull saw? If you're using forms or if you're using a business structure that you put in place 15 or 20 years ago, folks, you are, you've got a dull saw. It's time to get that thing sharpened up. So how to structure your business. I'm not going to ask you to pay $197. Um, we are approaching some holidays here. And so I'm going to have a holiday special right now just for you. And here's what it is. If you, with, between now and midnight tonight, you can get the book, the seminar video, and all of the forms we talked about, all the, the uh, webinars and all the uh, documents and everything online. If you use promo code M99, it'll be $147. Now, that's compared to $2,500 we talked about going through an attorney um, and that's entirely up to you. 
Again, I'm not an attorney and I'm not trying to substitute for one. What I'm trying to do is help you better understand the concept. Okay? So um, now it's only $147. I think compare that to one month's rent. What is your property rent for? Oh, you've got more than one property? What do they combined rent for? What is your rent? Not your cash flow, your rent. And what would it cost you if a tenant moved out? And I'm going to suggest it costs you two to three months worth of rent. What would it cost you if somebody filed suit against you? They can file suit in small claims court for like 15 or 20 bucks. And now you've got to get an attorney and go answer the lawsuit and deal with your insurance company and all this. It's just, trust me, I've been there. You don't want to go there. Get the book, the seminar, video, and all of the forms and everything else I talked about for $147. Go to money99.com and use promo code M99. Okay? M99. Now, this offer expires at midnight tonight, 11.59 p.m. My software knows when you watch this, and there's a, there's a clock starting associated with your account. And here are the instructions. You go to money99.com. You click on the store. You scroll down to Real Estate LLC. You click on the image of the book. You click Add to Cart and enter a promo code, m 99 and then the apply button. Don't forget the apply button. Keep having these notices pop up. Um, and that'll knock your price down to 147. You check out using PayPal or with a credit card of almost any sort. And um, so like I said, you're getting everything for 147, which is a fabulous deal, especially right before Christmas. It's unconditionally satisfaction guaranteed. And here's what I say. If for any reason this package is not right for you, I'll buy it back and we'll still be friends. And I've, that's been my policy now for, uh, well, we started doing these seminars in 1994. And people tell me that they are helpful. And I hope we learned something tonight. If you decide to buy the program, uh, I'd love to help you. If you decide it's not right for you, that's fine. Um, and I wish you well, and we're still friends, okay? Is that fair enough? So don't let this 147 slip away from you. Now, I want to warn you, this offer does expire at 11.59 tonight, and it's not going to be repeated. Um, this is going to, I mean, this, I've not done this before. And it's something worth taking advantage of. Now, if you don't need it, you don't need it. But I'm suggesting a lot of you people need it. And, you know, you lose a month's rent and you're having a heart attack, but you're unwilling to pay $147. So put things in perspective here, folks. Uh, so that's what you get for $149. Now, this part is going to be taken out of the video. This is only for those of you who are watching the live presentation. I'm going to go back and edit this out. Some of you are action takers. If you are an action taker, I've got a reward for you. Anyone who purchases this package in the next 30 minutes will get a 15-minute lightning strategy session with me over the phone in the next four weeks. We'll find a time that works for you. We'll get together either by a video call or a phone call, and <clears throat> I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have, or we can talk about your strategy, or we can talk about your portfolio. We can talk about whatever you want for 15 minutes. And I did one the other day, and we got involved. It took 25 minutes, and I know I didn't charge. Um, I'm My job is helping people succeed in real estate investments and small business. That's what I do for a living. And I figure if I do a better job of that, um, people will tell friends and, and, you know, hey, I learned something from this guy, and it benefits everybody in the long run. So don't worry about that. But um, if you'd like to talk directly with me, we're not doing as many seminars going forward. 
And this offer is just for those of you that are seeing this. This is going to be cut out of the replay. Um, it's going to be removed, so it won't even be there. But for the next 30 minutes, anybody who does buy and uses code M99 will will be in touch with you, and you will get the 15-minute uh, lightning strategy session where we'll be happy to talk with you about your situation. Okay? So that's it, folks. 45 minutes, not too bad. Get the book, the seminar, the seminar video, all of the forms, all of the webinars, all the document updates as they come out, and the weekly updates. Just go to Money99 right now and use promo code M99. Don't forget to click apply. The price will drop to $147 and, we'll, and you'll get a congratulations letter immediately. Give it five minutes, but you'll get one. If you don't get a confirmation, go look in your spam filter because some people's spam filters send things into promotions or spam or whatever. So, okay, that's the scoop, folks. And um, we're going to take some calls now, and I'm going to answer uh, some questions here on the live event. If you're watching this, this will be the end of the video. I do appreciate your time. If you have any questions, go to money99.com, click on Contact John, send me an email, I'll do my best to get back to you. And that's our program. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, for those of you who are here on the live event, hang around because I'm going to um, hop in and answer questions uh, in the next minute. So don't go away.